everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another food-based video. This time a Melbourne specific one because to be honest, we just love filming food videos. Do you have noticed as well? You always include me on the food video. Because <laughs> I know that you're not gonna say no. I don't know whether to be really happy about that or really offended. I'd be happy. Free food. I'm buying snacks all day. It's That's a great true. day. That is true. Also, you always ask me, and I'm starting to think there's a reason. Because you like to eat. <laughs> Today we are here with trying Melbourne's most famous snacks. We have spent the last two and a bit months living here and we have had the same places mentioned time and time again. And we also asked you guys on Instagram that are based here to recommend some places that maybe we haven't heard. So we are going to be testing four of Melbourne's most famous locations. Now where did we start this morning? Um, um, Loon or Luna. Is it, how do you say? No, it's Loon. So Loon is a, basically a pastry kind of place. They sell croissants, they sell like pan au chocolat, anything like that. A pastry kind of place. Also known as a bakery. A bakery. That's the one. A bakery. They're a bakery and they sell some incredible stuff. Like, yeah. Really incredible stuff. To be fair guys, this is a place that's reputation precedes it. Like we had heard about this. Yeah, the Taylor Swift reference. Always. We'd heard about this from day one of being in Melbourne. I literally think it was the first day we arrived. One of our friends was like, oh, keep an eye out for the croissant place where the queue is round the block. And we did and we saw it. And I'm not joking. This isn't an exaggeration. I have heard stories of people queuing for up to two hours hours for this bakery and at the time back two months ago i thought god these people have lost their minds you would never catch me doing that two hours for a croissant my, my literal words were i am not doing that <laughs> and i ended up doing it the, the first time we saw it we went on the the bus excursion which mm -hmm. katie was still here yeah we passed it we went down the street and we was like what are all these people queuing for and then we was like oh that must have been the um the croissant the shop the pastry place. So anyway, today we decided to join the back of the queue and take as long as it takes to get into this mysterious bakery and see what on earth the hype was about. Because if I'm gonna do it, I've gotta film it. So we're gonna flash back to this morning. That is when the snack testing really begun. Forty-five minutes, I won't get back. We are heading off on our first adventure of the day. We are going to Loon. We need to get the tram and head into Melbourne city centre, but we are leaving now. It's starting to feel like autumn. Starting to feel like autumn, but we are heading to Loon and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that the queue is not two hours long yeah, because... Yeah, yeah. And if it is, I'm not staying with you in the queue. <laughs> the croissants yeah, are going to really be worth it. I'm really excited to try that. I just, it's like a really long queue, which it always is. I don't know if I have it in mid today. We'll see how it goes. Okay guys, I've just started a timer. We're gonna see how long this takes. We're at 33 seconds so far, and I will overlay what the queue looks like so you can get a bit of scale. When I said these are popular and famous, I really meant popular and famous. Like this is not, I'm not exaggerating. This is ridiculous. So yeah, we'll see what this is at when we actually get our croissants. If we even get any, I'm fearful that there won't be any left. Uh, but we're not channeling that. Guys, we are nearing the front. We're well, not near the front, but we are nearing the front. We can see inside now, which is pretty good. Tom's attention span is uh, wavering. How do you feel? <laughs> Tom literally hates queuing for stuff. We've made it, guys. We are inside. Four people left in front of us in the queue. And uh, they're playing Lord. I like it even more. Frog song choice, I love it. Very happy. The smell in here is insane. So the sensory experience that I'm having right now is very, very good. The smell is great. Great. The visuals are great. Lord is playing. I'm having a good morning. Can I get the chocolate chip for And could I get one of the play croissant? Yeah, please. And then, oh, I don't know. Can I get the chocolate as well, please? Yeah. Guys, they've got tap water on pump. This is cool. I like this. I mean, this is not the highlight of the experience, but everywhere should have these. Happy, very happy. We have secured the goods, guys. I'm gonna show you the time in just a second, but we're about to go and sit somewhere quiet so that we can eat it. So guys, we have come to sit in some gardens. I actually don't know what they're called. I think they're called the treasury gardens. And we're just gonna have our breakfast. Here is Tom. Are you excited to finally get to eat? I'm just, yeah, very excited to eat. The, the further into the queue we got, the more Tom's morale was hitting the floor. How was your hot chocolate, Ashley? Really good, really rich. Nice, that's yeah. all I can say about that. Tom got a hot chocolate. I've got a cappuccino. I do have to say it is very, very nice. I just got it with 
with regular milk, no sugar, just a bog standard cappuccino. Cappuccino? Cappuccino. And that is very nice. It is a really good coffee. But obviously, the star of the show, guys, is the croissant. So we are going to test the pastries and I'm going to be brutally honest. And if I'm honest before we even start, a plain croissant would never be my choice. Like I always think, if you've got a line of pastries in front of you, why are you picking the plain one? But this is what they're famous for. So it would be wrong to not at least start with that. We did actually get three. We got that. What did you get? It was called a chocolate chip cookie, but it was kind of, I don't really know, it wasn't, it didn't look like a cookie. I think it was like a crookie. A crookie. A croissant cookie. Um, and then a pan of chocolate. Pan of, yeah, we call them pan of chocolates, as in like pan of chocolat, like French. Here they just call them chocolate croissants, which is easier to say. I always oh. get pulled up at work, they're like, why are you calling it the French name? And I'm like, that's just what we call them. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try them. I'm just gonna bite straight into it. So soft, very soft. Mm, it is good actually. Oh my god, that's actually very good. Oh my god, it literally melts in your mouth. Mm. Does yours like melt in your mm. mouth? This one actually wasn't too expensive either. Six dollars fifty, which I'll put the British pounds on screen as well. I think that's quite good for like freshly cooked croissant. Mm. Oh my god. I'm not big on pastry. Mm. This kind of pastry, but this is good to be fair. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's not a sausage roll. I'm not interested. Just look at that. Look at the shine on that as well. You can literally see how fresh that is. A little bit of croissant ASMR. So this is what was called a chocolate chip cookie. This is why I think it's a crookie because I'm pretty sure that's still pastry, like croissant pastry. It comes in a box though. That's pretty cool. The sauce that it's in is lovely. What is it? I don't know. That looks insane inside. Is that like half cookie, half pastry on the inside? It's definitely got a cookie taste. I don't know if you can really see the inside of it. It actually sort of doesn't look that appetizing when you're just looking at the inside, but like, it's kind of like half cookie dough, half pastry. Guys, I don't think I actually said the time, but I'll pop a screenshot on the screen. This is how long we were in the queue for Loon. It was quite a while. It, it was. was. It was. It was too long. It I was. probably wouldn't do it again, but they were incredible. Like they really were worth the hype. But I'm not sure they're worth the 45 minute queue. But if you're in Melbourne and you see the queues kind of like reasonable, I would say join it because it is worth testing. I mean, I'm not even that big on on croissants and stuff and they were good enough to the point where I'd have another one. I don't know what they're putting in it, probably no. just loads of butter and sugar, but something probably. made me very happy. I was like, oh my God, yeah. this is unreal. We are now gonna jump to the next place. This was actually recommended by you guys and it was called Rainbow Toasty. And upon a quick Google, I was very intrigued by this. So we headed there next because we just had to try it. This is the Rainbow Toasty. I think it's best to eat it while it's hot because obviously the cheese kind of needs to be melted. So I'm gonna pull this apart. The guy in the shop just explained it to us and he's basically made a little incision like he's put it here. So are you ready for this? It's gonna be in the mouth as well, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Slow. Slow. <laughs> are you joking me? <laughs> no, stop it. Are you kidding? It's still going. <laughs> oh. that, one, that is pretty cool. Like, look at that. It looks like it's coming out of his mouth. Apparently, guys, this is cheese. I'm a little bit like on edge about whether or not this is actually nice cheese or if it's like plastic cheese that they've dyed multicolored. Tom and I are going to eat this now because obviously we're not going to waste it. It's very hell? plasticky. It is plasticky, isn't it? How's the cheese? You're right. This wouldn't have worked if we'd waited till it got cold. Um, yeah. Nice. Weird. It tastes like cheap cheese. Yeah, it's alright. We also did pay to get garlic on it, guys. So like that was a little extra. Well, not an extra. Basically, one of them was garlic, one of them was strawberry, but it was still cheese in the middle. So I was kind of thinking strawberry on the outside of the bread. Yeah. No, from me. So we opted for the garlic option, which is this here. I mean, it's definitely cool. I think it's more the novelty of it. Like it's not the best cheese toasty you're ever gonna eat, but the novelty of what just happened it's was quite cool. fun. It's good. Yeah. I bet this is really popular with children. <laughs> like if kids saw this, I would be like, oh my god, that's amazing. We're just walking around Melbourne today, eating random food. And I'm not mad about it. Is it is it dying our tongue? No, my tongues are still in the normal colour. I'm not sure that how I feel about the inside of my sandwich being bright blue. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. Good though. It actually is quite nice. Cost twelve dollars ninety. Twelve dollars ninety. A lot for a toasty. Seven pounds. Mm. Very expensive. Separate to the video, guys. Yeah. But this is Guildford Lane, and there's so much cool like greenery and like coffee shops and plants down here. Yeah. This whole little side street is really cool. I've never walked down here before, but I like it. Do you want to read out this article? The sixth best pizza in the world lies at a tiny restaurant in an Australian city. Guys, when I asked on Instagram for recommendations, a handful of you recommended Gradi or Grady. I'm not too sure how you pronounce this. Pizzeria, and there are a few of these dotted around the city, I think, but I'm not sure. We ordered from our nearest one on Uber Eats and it has just arrived. Apparently this is world famous for being the sixth best pizza in the entire world. I'm struggling to believe, guys, that the sixth best pizza... Sixth best pizza in the world isn't in Italy. True. Yeah, I wonder who's actually like, 
Who's reviewing this? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, this is the Daily Mail, so we will not believe them. <laughs> it's in the Guinness World Oh, it's founded by an Italian. Oh, they are Italian. Okay. Yes. Oh, he's from Naples, the guy that owns this restaurant. Do you know what? I'll let it off. I might be I might be about to have the sixth best pizza of my life. So, what did you go for? Just a margarita, plain and boring. But I feel like you can't beat a margarita, so it's a good way of judging it. I feel as though, kind of similar with the croissant this morning, you've got a test of like staple product. I you, didn't. You didn't. I thought you were getting a margarita as well. Well, I was, and then I thought I'll add veggies to it. However, they're not like the best veggie selection. You know when you risk ordering a vegetarian pizza and then the vegetables on it are a bit rogue? Like I was thinking maybe mushroom, sweet corn, pepper, onion. This is courgette and aubergine, so I'm probably gonna peel those off. First impression, it's a decent size. It's not bad, well I bloody hope so. I can't lie, these were $28 a pizza. Yeah, they were expensive, that's like... What is going on? Are they still ringing you? Guys, I just ordered off Uber Eats and now I've had a million missed calls. It cost me $28, which is about 15 British pounds. It's quite expensive, but it's not like super, super expensive. Like I wouldn't usually pay 15 pounds for a takeaway. But then again, sometimes Domino's costs that. Yeah, Domino's is more expensive, but especially without the deal. I'm gonna let you take the first bite and do the first review because yours okay. is the margarita. Is it sixth best in the world? No, it's not like, wow, <laughs> to be honest, it's nice, it is nice. I imagine probably eating it in the restaurant is an experience in itself because it's, it's probably quite a bougie restaurant. I don't really have anything to add. It's a pizza. It's, it's nice. good, but it could have been great. Maybe we should warm up. Yeah, shall we reheat it? Because mine sort of tastes like the box. So we've reheated them because they were they were really cold. When the cheese starts to go like plastic on a pizza, I feel as though maybe it's not the one. It's that looks good. Hot. It's very hot. Mine's really cold still. It was on the bottom shelf. Oh. Mm. Okay, we're talking now. Better. It's turned up. <laughs> yeah, guys, like honestly, it is nice. I'm not gonna go as far as to say like the sixth best pizza, but the cheese to tomato ratio is good. The actual like base of the pizza is really mm. nice. The base is really good. The cheese is really nice. Mm. They're all wood fired, which I think is the best kind of pizza. 100%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really? Bengal boys? <laughs> I don't know why I was singing that. Well guys, we will get back to you with dessert because we're not done yet. But this pizza is good. And as always, thank you so much for your recommendations on Instagram because I hadn't heard of this. Next location, guys. This was recommended from you guys on Instagram. This is Uncle Tetsu's Japanese Cheesecake Restaurant. Another little queue out the door. Not crazy this time, but still a queue. a lot easier and only cost ten dollars in total whereas the entire loon order came to thirty nine dollars and now we're back so we have just finished our pizza eight out of ten no not an eight a six a six yeah oh no i'm gonna give it an eight no it was good it was good but if i'm gonna be brutally honest it wasn't it wasn't sixth in the world true yeah okay so based on the rep on the reputation six maybe the article led us astray well now that we've finished that we're gonna crack on with dessert which is the final food we're gonna be testing in this video this was by far after loon the second most recommended place in my dms after loon after loon we went here in the afternoon after, after loon this is our uncle tetsu japanese cheesecake Cheese tart, I think. Basically, a lot of people have hyped about this. We've walked past here so many times, like countless times. It's just on the main high street. Literally, the, the tram that I get to work passes this every day and I didn't know it was there. The logo is cool though. Yeah. And the packaging's nice. This is a little Japanese dessert shop. And this is what we got, guys. The one on the bottom left is mine. That is the cheese tart. And the one on the top right is Tom's chocolate cheese tart. No, it wasn't a, it wasn't a tart. What was it? It was a... Chocolate cheese loaf? I don't know. Was it this shirt before? I'm not sure. It's it, a bit it, or is it melted? This is what it looks like. Do I eat that? I think or so. Or is it wrapped in like a bag? No, I think you eat that, but it does look a bit weird. Show them yours. Can you see that? Look at the texture of that. I'm not really too sure. It's like a baby's nappy. <laughs> How many nappies have you seen in your life? Are you joking me? What a weird analogy for I wore nappies for three years. You wore nappies till you were three? I don't know, did I? I, just, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not even more. How long do you wear nappies for? Not till you... Well, actually... Probably three, isn't it? No, that's a... Is that old? I don't think so. It's sweating. It's sweaty. I don't know if I can eat this now. I'm gonna be honest about this. These weren't the recommended products. Everybody told us we should get the cheesecake crepe and we tried to order that and the lady told us that they don't have any stock until April the 11th. So we might go back and try that in a vlog because that was the recommendation. So can instead we got these. Oh wow, that's incredible. Mine's kind of weird. Mm. Oh my God, that's so good. Really? That's so good. Doesn't look it. <laughs> I think it's a bag of cream. 
<laughs> Mine's weird. It's like sweet and savory at the same time. It's disintegrating in my hands. <laughs> oh, this is such a weird texture. Uh, it's gonna drop. That's like an eclair. <laughs> Tom's just hiding it down. This is kind of the inside texture of mine. It's a little bit weird. To be honest, I can't really show you mine because I feel like if I put it in the camera, it's just gonna fall to pieces. It's essentially like cream, a bag made out of chocolate. That's pretty much it. If it hasn't been left for so long, because it's been like a few hours, maybe it wouldn't have been as squishy. Do you wanna try this? I've just realized what it is. What is it? it? put me off as I'm eating it. What is it? It's like Daryl Dunker cheese. <laughs> No, it isn't. But in a pastry. No, it yes, isn't. Yes, it is. No. And no. that's really horrible. <laughs> it's not terribly dunk of cheese. No. That's really strong. No, that you know you know when you have like your little sticks? Yeah, and I you have the little pot. It's not that. In the, what's in the pot? Yeah, cheese, but this is. <laughs> Who's that? No, it's not. <laughs> We are going to end this video here. We have had a very fun day just trying all of the different foods. I'm very full. All of that was so filling. It was all quite heavy. It was definitely more snacky than uh, meal. If you have enjoyed this one and you want to see some more Melbourne based food videos, Australia based food videos, do let me know in the comments. We actually do have one more planned. It's going to be a really good one. Exactly. It's going to be a really good one. Can I host it? You are hosting it. No, but can I, like, can I be the presenter? Yeah, sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one if you have enjoyed it do give a huge thumbs up and like i say there is a lot of exciting content coming very soon more food videos some surprises they not know uh -uh. how do they know how will they know how will they know no one will know they will never know they'll never know anyway we're gonna go i shall be back with my next video which will be up on my channel at the weekend bye guys bye Is bad blood in the playlist? It's oh, is it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Oh, the set list is a bit different tonight. So it's not just one set. Ah, it's not just one set. This is me trying instead of grace. This is the state of grace.